All right, so in this video, we are going to go over the cash flow summary tab. Um, we'll start just, we'll go from top to bottom and I'll just review some interesting formulas and I'll show you um, some conditional formatting. Actually, I like to start with the conditional formatting. So um, we have the ability in this model to do um, anywhere from one to 10 year hold period. So when you come back into the summary tab, and I showed this briefly in our summary review, but let's update this to five years. So notice that when you come back into our cash flow summary, everything is reformatted to um, a five year hold period and you're not seeing anything else past that. And so starting from the top here, you'll notice some formulas, which is basically saying if the max of the previous years is equal to the summary C13, then give me zero or give me a blank. I'm sorry. So two quotation marks equals blank. If not, then give me the previous year plus one. And so we have year five is, is our exit. So the max of all these numbers is five. Um, so that does equal C13. So then give us a blank. And then if not, give us H4 plus one, but we have a blank here. So um, you'll see that repeated. You'll see this formula repeated throughout uh, the model here in this section. Um, and everything else is really self-explanatory when you go below um, in the header. And so moving down, total acquisitions costs. So we have our, our purchase price, our transfer, PIP reserve, which we talked about in the summary video, and then our closing costs. And so you see all that coming in here. And the one thing we don't have in this top row is our lender's fees. And that's because our lender's fees are coming out here. So it's the loan disbursement net, the fees. So if we go to C35 of the summary tab, You'll see here we are loan dispersal amount. What you'll see is our loan amount uh, minus our 1%. All right, so that explains our, our acquisitions uh, section. Now we come down to departmental revenues. I kind of want to show you. You'll notice as I scroll to the right and to the left and as I scroll down, notice that the formula is identical. And so what I'm doing here is I'm doing an index match match formula. So you'll see I have my if statement. Um, and then after that, you'll see our index match and match. And so what this is doing is basically it's, it's um, trying to, it's the formula is referencing columns and rows. And when it identifies the column and row and it, comes to that intersection, it'll pull in the number that I'm looking for from our operating cash flow tab. And so here, you notice I'm not putting as much detail as we have from our operating cash flow tab. It's really just the cash flow summary. And so again, this is all one formula. And I'm going to do another video that talks about index match match and how you guys can do this as well. Um, so scrolling down, this is, you know, the same formula all the way until we get to our exit price. And so in our, you know, exit section, this is all referring back to our summary tab. Um, and it's basically saying, you know, if H4 equals our exit year, then give us uh, C41 in our summary tab. All right, so below that we have our debt uh, assumptions. And here we have our uh, loan disbursement net fees. And then we have our debt service, you can see um, we have our interest only payments and then it goes to payments with the loan amortizing and then we have our loan repayment. So let's just, for example, let's increase our hold period. Let's say you know, nine years and let's do an interest only period to seven just to check, make sure this is all working. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then it starts to amortize. Okay. And then again, we have our loan repayment. Below that, we have our unlevered cash flows, which is basically our acquisition costs plus NOI uh, plus sales proceeds. And then our levered costs as well, which is our acquisition costs less um, our loan disbursement. So um, anything we had to pay for net of the loan and then our NOI less our debt service and then our sales proceeds uh, after debt repayment. And then finally, at the bottom here, we have our um, risk and return metrics. So we're calculating our free and clear return, uh, which I discussed both this and the cash on cash 
um, in our previous summary video. And then, or I'm sorry, in the previous summary tab video, and then we have our risk metrics down here. All right, and that is everything for the cash flow summary tab. And in our next tutorial, we'll go over the operating cash flow tab. Thanks.